My name's John. I'm a math and science teacher at Place Cartier Adult Education Center. I'm Natasha Bellows. I'm an English teacher at Place Cartier as well. My name is Leticia Andrews, and I'm a biology teacher at PAC. I'm Troy Bradley, and I'm teaching Living English at PAC. If a colleague of yours were to come to you and say, oh, come on, why formative assessment? To improve student learning. To improve your teaching. It's ultimately a time-saving technique to do both of those things at the end of the day. I'd say it works. It provides real-time feedback. It all links together. I can't see how you could actually be a teacher where your goal is to actually have students who learn without using formative assessment. These little check-ins to, hey, are you getting this? Is this working? Is what I'm doing actually helpful or should we change the strategies? Chances are they are probably doing it. They don't have maybe a name tied to the activity or to the lesson plan or whatnot, but they are doing it. Or they, and they're doing it, but they haven't brought it to the next step where they're providing real-time feedback mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're observing it, they keep it in their mind, but something needs to come out of their mind after that, whether it's a change in practice, whether it's a message to the student, and maybe they've been given an example like co-constructing criteria and they're afraid. Mm -hmm. But it could be simply walking down the aisle and tapping on a student who looks like they're falling asleep and just kind of getting them back on track, engaged. There's so many different levels of formative assessment that you can really start small and as you feel more confident and comfortable, try new things.